Level 20 on the fire staff. Wait, is this the... Yeah, I think this is the start of an episode. What's up, guys? Welcome back to episode 25 of the New World Iron Man series. And we are starting things off at Bane's because I am editing and doing other things on the side and this is just always what I do. While I'm busy on the side, man, gotta knock out those three glowing saps eventually. When I get these three glowing saps, you have my word. I will get level 200 furnishing to make the trophies. Or maybe it's 175, I'm not entirely sure. But I will definitely get my furnishing up so I can use them. As for the final perk here... Don't really know what it's gonna be. Critical hits with fire staff abilities inflict a stack of burning, dealing 6% weapon damage each second for 6 seconds. I'll take that. Ooh, that's a legendary bag right there. Come on. Don't show me a freaking bluff scepter. Damn it! <laughs> It was a joke! That's hilarious. Not in a good way though. Ooh, that actually looks kind of cool. I don't know these Dryad Raptors had a little bit of green glow to them. That's sick. Anyway, while I'm here at Veins, I'm actually going to level up my Rapier a bit. I forgot I had this on me. Check out this Rapier. Look how sick this is. Anger Earthbane and Leeching Flurry built into the Rapier. So you heal for 46% of the damage you do from using Flurry. That's an insane amount of healing. And it has the Anger Earthbane, and it scales off intelligence so I don't even have to respec. Let me go ahead and just throw a few of these out while I'm here. Yo, shout out to Young Hung. Thank you for the compliment. I'm glad you liked the videos. And he has a level 42 Iron Man on Marama. That is so cool to see the uh, Iron Man movement growing on here. I think it's an important movement because the game is just so much funner when you play this way. And I think, you know, anyone who tries it gets more enjoyment out of the game. And if you do make an Iron Man on this game, please record it, make a video series of it, and tell me in the comments. I'll subscribe to your channel, and I'll be glad to check it out, because these videos are a blast to make, and I'm assuming they're pretty fun to watch, too. Oh my god, a life crystal core. They gotta stop. Dude, there's no way my girlfriend just got Vengeful Fisherman Pants. She's been here for, like... 20 minutes. She just has the best luck on this game. These only used to drop from Malevolence, the actual boss up in the tower, but now they changed it and I think it can drop from any mob. Dude, she, she literally just got here for the first time ever and she got him as a drop. Dude, a Tanner shirt. What the heck? What don't these mobs here drop? You get so many pieces of the skilling set. Unfortunately, I already have a Tanner shirt. This might even be my third, I'm not sure. We're still missing the legs and the Tanner Gloves, I think. So we have three out of five pieces of the set, but you know, it's still a pretty cool drop to get. May as well build them up. I've been doing a few Genesis speedruns with this hatch that we got two episodes ago, and it is so much fun. With the Anger Earthbane and Rogue combination, I actually hit a 9k crit on Taxodius, getting a backstab on him. It's really, really, really good DPS. I think we're going to go ahead and upgrade this straight away to 625. We have tons of shards. And not only that, from now on when we open our hatchet casts every day from Gypsum, we're going to be getting 400 shards instead of 340 from before. I think I had a 620 hatchet, so let's start off with that. 400 shards. Oh, shout out to Soko99. I don't know what it is, but I always meet people who watch the series here at Banes. Yeah, I appreciate the support, man. Thanks. Oh my god, it's our first Shield of Banes Great Axe drop. Dude, I've been at this boss for like... Well, in total on this account, I think I've spent probably over 100 hours here. That's the first one. Come on. Let's see if it's 590 plus. 586! No! It was so close! The third perk is Refreshing Move, if you happen to get it in 590+, plus and are able to upgrade it. Unfortunately, I'm not, so that's a salvage, sadly. It's kind of a cool great X, but oh well. I'm sure we'll get another one in the next 100 hours. Oh my god, like four kills later, we got another one. That is so strange. I've been here for so long. We almost got those back-to-back, -back, like, relatively speaking. Never mind, it's a 569. I'm sure the next one will be 590+. plus. Yo, shout out to Whirly Windy. Thank you for the kind words and the positive feedback on the series. The series doesn't seem to get that many views, although it is steadily growing, but the feedback from day one has been, like, overwhelmingly positive for this series, and that's really the important thing here. So I really do appreciate it. I have to give everyone who gives the series positive feedback a shout out because they went out of their way to say something nice to me, and that type of stuff should never be taken for granted. But anyway, we're all wrapped up at Banes for the night. Didn't happen to get another Shield of Banes or another Glowing Sap. It really has been a while since we've had one of those, but uh, gonna do some more Gen speedruns just for the rest of the night, and hopefully get some more Garden Keeper legendaries. <laughs> oh man, that is not cool game. Look at these shoes. Physical version of Refreshing Pillar of Fire, and then I check the stats. 
God, my heart sunk. 24 dexterity, really? Dude, yes. Guarding Keeper Hatchet. Whoa, and actually a Tower Shield in that bag. Oh, this could be a really, really big bag for us. Come on, let's check out the Tower Shield first. Dude, our first Beast Ward Shield, and it has Sturdy? Oh my god, gorgeous. Okay, let's keep that same energy for the Hatchet. Eh, I mean the Beast Bane is cool, but I already have a set of Beast Weapons ready to go for when that dungeon comes out. However many years in the future that is. I thought it was going to be a beast dungeon with this new brimstone sands or whatever, but it is yet another ancient dungeon, sadly. Excuse me? Three bonus phoenix weave plus an aptitude crate? Dude, I have two pieces of the weaving set on. How did I just get three bo I'll take it, man. Definitely taking that. Alright, now on to the Asmodium for the day, and I don't even think I can make 10. I think I have like 5 Cinnabar left. 6. Eh, a little better than I thought. Don't have any bonuses for this, or don't have any set pieces to get bonuses here, but we're almost at that tier 3 aptitude crate mark, where I will finally have a chance to get a piece of a smelting gear set. Ooh, we might actually get a tier 2 armoring aptitude crate from this. We have 8 infused armor scraps from that gen run last night. Or from that gen session and we did indeed get the uh, aptitude crate although i really should have saved that for tomorrow so i can get more emerald gypsum but whatever some whoa five phoenix we've been five runic leather Ooh, that's actually pretty generous oh and we get a sliver of adder stone for extra pockets that saves me the effort of going out of my way to mine it i wonder if i should just roll a bag with this right now all right now do these still give you iron hide yes they do perfect we were almost out we only had like 270 left and I didn't have enough to make the infused leather I need for the Satchi roll, which we're going to end up doing. The game gave me a sliver of outer stone. I may as well use it. And I wasn't sure if these boars up here in Eden Grove still gave iron hide because I know a lot of the old iron hide dropping monsters now drop thick hide and maybe vice versa. I'm not sure what they did, but I know they changed a lot of how uh, hide dropping is on this game. But these boars up here in Eden Grove, just right next to Genesis, do still drop iron hide if any other iron men out there need it. And it's pretty easy to kill them and they give 30 to 40 each. It's quite generous, because I know the Tigers at Thunder King Grotto, which a lot of people like to go to Ironhide for, they only drop you like 20. It's just you have to learn how to aim a hatchet first. I am getting so many aptitude crates today. They should give you multiple Emerald Gypsum per day, because I feel like I'm wasting a lot of it right now. But we're stocking up on more scale cloth, but honestly, the Phoenix Weave materials are not an issue for me. I have like over 80 of each still, I just can't seem to get rid of them for some reason. We ended on 1167 iron hide. This is plenty with the bonuses. We may even get two saturals out of this. I'll just save the uh, infused leather for the future. Or maybe if I get some scar hide and smolder hide, I can use it on some uh, runic leather. But there's 171 leather working, and we have basically everything we need now, thanks to that aptitude crate to make a satchel. Well, didn't expect to be doing this today, but let's just go ahead and do it. We got our three pieces of the armoring set on. We have our earrings with plus five minimum armor quality. And we have the Grand Rune of Holding from the Faction Shop. Plenty of Faction Tokens, so no need to worry about that. Type in Satchel, Infused Leather Satchel. Let's use Shade Cloth and Fey Iron, since I have no other use for it right now, and it's just building up. And then the wonderful, wonderful Sliver of Adderstone, which I got for free. Uh, looks good. Hopefully we get on the higher end of that. I don't have any Satchels that are like 530 plus, I don't think. Eh, no! Ah, I can't get rid of Azoth the Tuned, man. No matter what I do. Look, I have two satchels with Azoth the Tuned. I was hoping to replace one of these. I think I just got the same exact satchel, though. Quarryman's Burden? Oh, no. I have Quartermaster's Burden. I think I'm just going to keep what I got, because I usually have way more weight in armor than I do in blocks, stones, and gems, and pickaxes. Like, like wh what is this perk, man? Mmm, not that great. Mmm, not that great. Mmm, Garden Keeper Great Axe off Taxodius. Regular Genesis run. Oh, no, 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 no. Dude, we got back to back Garden Keeper Great Axe legendaries from Taxodius. This is right after that last run. And what is it with these keen speed Great Axes? They're not bad in and of themselves, but for my purposes, not a fan. 
They are very nice though, now post stretch. I've heard very good things about the Keen Speed buff. Yo, check this out, guys. A medium headpiece with 24 dexterity, Keen Vol Kick, and Anger Earth Ward. Finally, we landed a good drop in terms of armor. It has been a while. That is perfect for a spear gen DPS setup. Oh, thank the Lord. Look at what we got here, guys. Some medium gloves, int con, physical aversion, empowering fireball. Finally! These and these shoes right here, man, we are looking like a pretty mean mage right now. <gasps> Hell yeah, Garden Keeper Spear. Let's check it out. That's beautiful. Hold on, let me loot this chest and then we can talk about it because this team's already been waiting on me. I uh, went to the bathroom as soon as I started, so I kind of feel bad. But dude, yes! Fortifying Perforate, Vicious, and Plague Strikes, why not? Some mutations have lifesteal, and that is just... Oh, it's Plague Strikes too. It's not Plague Crits. That would have been slightly less good, but man. Gorgeous Spear. Dude, Fortifying Perforate built into the Spear not only saves me the armor piece, but it's also more effective. 16%. There's three hits of Perforate. That's 48% Fortify every time you use it. That's like instantly hitting Fortify Cap. That is beautiful, man. This is why you do regular Genesis as an Iron Man. You gotta build up your weapons and... This is the most legendaries per hour as far as I'm concerned. Holy crap, and check out this tower shield we just got. Sturdy Corrupted Ward and Void Shield Ward. Could you imagine if there was a Void Mutation at a Corrupted Dungeon? That would be like a 15% flat damage absorption just with that shield. As I mean, very specific scenario required, but that's a really good tower shield. I'm gonna change up the weapons for these next few Genesis runs, and I promise it's not gonna be Genesis forever, but it is the best place for me to grind gear and weapon drops and I have to take advantage of it. It's pretty good gold too, I mean if we ever need it for anything we're over 200k gold. But this is the spear we're going to be running alongside the hatchet for a while. The near best in slot, if you think about it, javelin spear that I got I think an episode or two ago. It has Sundering Javelin built into it for a 24% rend for 10 seconds. I slotted the Nonix in there because I plan on starting every fight off just by throwing a javelin. So hopefully I'll get that 15% damage buff. And if it crits, I do get 10% Fortify as well. So I'm really looking forward to trying this out. It's really fun to mix weapons up, especially if you're doing the same dungeon over and over and over. Alright, here goes the first Javelin chuck on the account. Let me be the first to get the hit. Alright, direct headshot. Oh crap, I thought this was just a regular healer hitting me up. I didn't even notice the name. Sorry, Solo Eli. You will definitely be in the video assuming you do a good job healing this Genesis run. But that's cool. This is probably another Iron Man. That's amazing to see. Let's get into this gen run. Alright, yeah, you did a great job, Solo Eli. Thanks for healing for us, buddy. I know it can be hard to get a proper healer set up on an Iron Man with the Sacred Ring and the Fortifying Sacred Ground and everything. So yeah, I know it can be tough, but you did great. Dude, there's no way I just got Runic Thread from Taxodius. That has to be extremely rare. That's only my second one on the account. Oh my god, I got so caught up in Genesis, I forgot the Summer Medley Fair ends in one more day. So we're gonna go do a huge fishing session. I have respect into a healer, so I can get the fishing buffs from the focus tree here. It's a bunch of line tension, and also 10% increase to caught fish size. Didn't know that one was on there, I think that's new. But yeah, I think we're just gonna do a monster fishing trip and then wrap up the video here on this. Don't do it. Okay. But yeah, I think we're just gonna do a monster fishing trip and then wrap up the video on this. This is something I seriously need to take advantage of while playing Iron Man mode, and I would really regret it if I just let the event end. Oh, right, let's go. First fishing aptitude crate. We'll probably just go until we hit the tier 3 aptitude crate. That should be a pretty good session. But let's see what we get from the tier 2. I don't think there's a slight chance of getting anything good from these. But I opened them anyway on camera, just in case. Because I don't actually know what you can get from them. There we go. Fishing aptitude level 4. We also have a tier 3 fishing aptitude crate on us now, which we have a chance at getting a fishing clothing pattern from. We haven't had any luck yet, so... Yeah, let's just open it, see if we get one finally. Uh, no. Still no pieces of the fishing set on this account. These tier 3 aptitude crates take like 4 hours to get, so... Yeah, seeing nothing in the crate, kinda sad, but we're not really here for that. It's just a nice passive reward. One of the awesome things about this Shattered Mountain fishing spot 
I admit it's not awesome for everybody, but for me it is because I need the supplies. There are tons of alligators and I think they're called war riff stags that drop iron hide when you skin them, and they are just everywhere. I guess the not awesome part would be these corrupted mobs. I mean, I don't understand. Fishing's supposed to be chill, and they put the best fishing spot, like, surrounded by the most annoying stuff in the game. But it's okay for me, because obviously I get the iron hide and the wire fiber out of it. So it looks like we ended on a total of 110 Eternum Sturgeons that trip. 50 small, 32 medium, 28 large. It's actually not a bad ratio. Let me power through these really quick, and then we'll see how many fish bones we got. Nice, the very last fish gave us another fish bone. Overall, pretty average luck. 10 fish bones is 250 tokens. And then, not sure how many of these are, but we, at least we got over 100 pieces of food from that session. Definitely enough food for the event to end, and for me not to regret it that much. We actually got a lot more tokens than I thought we were going to get. We're up to 368 from that session, plus an emerald gypsum, which is really nice. Dude, this is going to buy us so much food. I think what I'll do is I'll pick up 125 of the constitution food, and then where's the strength one? Here. Pick up 59 of these for my Genesis speedruns. Oh, look at that. My girlfriend just hit me up to do gen. And with that purchase, we're going to be ending this episode here. So thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe before you head off and come back for the next episode in three or four more days. As per usual, I have something planned for it. And no, it's not Genesis related. <laughs> See you guys then.